Well, good morning to you. Good Wednesday. I'm Fox 26 meteorologist John Dawson. Glad you're here with forecasting with friends and it's all about Milton today. Hurricane Milton continues to be um, such a threat to the west coast of Florida and really all of Florida. Uh, any part of the southern portions of the peninsula is certainly uh, going to be getting hammered by the storm. And as a matter of fact, it's already beginning to make its impacts. We've seen reports of at least two tornadoes uh, that have formed in the southern portions of the state. This is away from where the landfall is expected to take place. So this is the beginning of those threats that are already beginning to uh, make an impact. So as always, a hurricane normally or traditionally these has brought four threats. That's going to be the winds. Uh, damaging winds, which is why we have the Saffir Simpson wind scale. That's how we categorize these storms. A storm surge, which is when that ocean level rises and those waves and currents are so destructive. That's traditionally been the most deadly component. Uh, we've got freshwater flooding, which is in we recent years has become very deadly. Uh, folks here in the Houston area, of course, know all about freshwater flooding from Harvey, where it just rains so much. And then tornadoes is that fourth threat, which is a little bit more of a of difficult to predict where and when those will happen. Those other threats are fairly uh, predictable, something that we have confidence in saying and this much of a storm surge is expected here and this much rainfall is expected here. The numbers can vary, of course, but the tornado ones, you can get kind of a region, but you can't pick out when uh, and exactly where the paths would be or anything along those lines. So already beginning to see some of those threats. And I will point out, that we have a fifth threat that hurricane brings as well. And that's the aftermath threat. When we see people that die because of um, mistakes that are made as far as uh, power lines being down, misuse of generators with the carbon monoxide poisoning, um, when there's other just sort of threats that take place after the storm has already made its landfall. And a lot of that can be prevented. And we hope that those folks in Florida are kind of moving through that. Let's jump into the graphics and talk a little bit about what we're seeing right now with Milton. You'll notice that that very distinct eye of the storm has sort of gone away uh, within the last several hours. Clouds have kind of begun to, to cloud over that just a little bit, and that's going to help to keep the storm from strengthening. Um, I'll go ahead and say it will help it to weaken, but I don't expect a, a large weakening to take place. We're so close to this landfall. We're probably looking at maybe 12, 16 hours at the most from when the eye will make its landfall across the west coast of Florida. You can see how it's losing some of its symmetry, meaning that it's not as balanced of a storm. You've got more activity on the east side or the right side of the eye or where you would see the eye. Over on the left side, it's just less rain and clouds. That's drier air that's actually getting pulled into the storm. That is good news. That is something positive to report is that this decay, this weakening that was always been expected is beginning and we're hopeful that it'll just increase even more and more, but we're not as optimistic that a dramatic weakening will be taking place. It'll still be right at that category three, category four strength when it makes its landfall. So here's that, uh, we'll switch and we'll see if we can get an official look here at that forecast track. The 11 a.m. update uh, that they issued has 145 mile an hour winds uh, sustained. We've got that movement happening, uh, moving to the northeast now at around 17 miles an hour, and that pressure is holding at about 131. So you'll notice things have sped up just a little bit. Um, before, when we were talking from a 2 a.m. to 4 a.m. landfall, it does look like this is pushed up. Um, probably uh, at least around midnight, if even a several hours earlier when that eye will actually make its landfall. But the impacts will certainly be felt here. We're pausing at around 1030 p.m. and you can see definitely major impacts happening as that uh, uh, storm is beginning to have hurricane force winds across it. As it moves across the peninsula, it will weaken quite a bit. Uh, moving, interacting with land always will make that happen. And we get to Thursday morning by lunch. This is going to be back out 
at least the eye back out over water. Now while I've got just a moment here and you can see that yellow cone that's drawn in there a little bit, I want to remind everybody, uh, especially if we happen to have someone in Florida who's watching, that that yellow cone does not represent impacts. That's not showing us where the threats are going to be happening. That cone is strictly a forecast cone, and it's just telling us where we think the very center of Milton will be with confidence in that yellow shading and most likely close along that center line right there. So the threats, the storm surge, the winds, the tornadoes, the flooding rains, that's all happening well outside of that yellow shading. So just a, a reminder of that. And we can see that a little clearer here with our wind field that is expected. That yellow outside ring there representing tropical storm force winds, basically 60 mile an hour to hurricane force winds in the orange. And then there's a tighter circle there. We can see that closer when we zoom in that red area right around the hurricane icon there that represents the hurricane force winds. And so still when we get to, to Thursday morning around sunrise, we'll have Milton in the middle of Florida with hurricane force winds, most likely at category three strength. So a, ma a major hurricane across Florida, and that's gonna weaken eventually as it gets out to the Atlantic. Here are the watches and warnings. I, again, I mentioned this is much wider than the cone, the red, that hur hurricane warning, that's basically just the winds that's a threat. And then also the blue there representing the tropical storm winds that are expected. Here's that rainfall expectations. You'll notice that the worst of the rainfall not happening where the landfall is near Sarasota or Tampa Bay, but the worst of the rainfall will be happening up around Daytona Beach and down to the Orlando area, and maybe even up towards Jacksonville just a little bit. So that storm surge is when that wall of water gets pushed up and makes its way uh, into land, and that is something that is going to be a huge, huge threat overall. So. We're looking at just running out of time quite quickly for the Florida coast and uh, those mandatory evacuation orders have already been in place. Most of that directly ex because of the storm surge, 6 million people in 11 counties. Tampa Bay hasn't taken a direct hit in more than a century and Tampa's mayor warning that a 15 foot storm surge, which is forecast possibly could even swallow a whole house. We're very scared. We don't know what to expect and we don't know when to come back home. I've been through it before. You learn from them. Yeah, yeah. And I have over the years. All right, officials have warned that anyone staying behind must fend for themselves because the first responders won't be able to risk their own lives attempting to rescue during the height of the storm. Take a look at this a time lapse of Hurricane Milton as one of the astronauts on the International Space Station captured the size of this storm from space. It's a large storm. It's one of the strongest, of course, that we've had for many years here in the Gulf of Mexico. And the NOAA hurricane hunters that have been flying in have had a very bumpy ride into Hurricane Milton yesterday. I'm going to give you a chance to watch these guys bounce around just a little bit. They, of course, are the ones that are collecting that so important data from the middle of the storm that helps create the forecast as well as research projects. And those guys had a very rough storm, uh, rough ride uh, overall uh, as they uh, moved uh, into uh, the storm. I want to go ahead and um, jump forward a little bit if we can, Bradley, and look at this um, interview that Allison Gargaro had a chance to talk with one of the reporters, Walter Allen. I, we have a sister station in Orlando as well as Tampa, and she had a chance this morning to talk about that Milton landfall. Walter, I want to get a look at what you are monitoring at this time. As we bring your audio up, we can hear some of those rain bands. The latest model has this making landfall as a category four, but it's going to be all about that catastrophic storm surge along your coast. Uh, that's exactly it. That's what the warning is. Uh, in fact, if you guys saw on social media, Tampa Mayor Jane Castor said, uh, if you stay in the evacuation zone, zones A and B, and you, cho and you choose to stay, uh, you will die. And, and she meant that for effect really to drive the point home. We we're talking about 10 to 15 foot storm surge. Uh, here is the door uh, into our Fox 13 studio here. Uh, just to show you that that is one floor. That's 10 feet. So 
a story and a half, you're talking about storm surge. That you can't survive uh, that type of storm surge. Again, uh, possible category four, strong category three that is expected to make landfall uh, at some point uh, tonight or early tomorrow morning. It looks like tomorrow morning at about two o'clock in the morning. Um, we have seen catastrophic storm surge uh, in the past, not in this area. Texas, you guys know all about it. Hurricane Ike, uh, that was back in 2008, 20 feet of storm surge, and that made 25 miles inland. So that is the last uh, devastating storm surge and something they're possibly preparing for uh, here in the Bay Area. Uh, it looks like the eye is going to make landfall south of us, about 15 to 20 miles south of us. But you know that cone of uncertainty, uh, if it were to jog just to the north, uh, we can certainly uh, see some of the worst of the storm surge. Now, the evacuations have been ongoing for multiple counties all up and down our coastline, Hillsborough, Pasco, Pinellas, Manatee, Sarasota counties, multiple zones within those counties. So you're talking uh, hundreds of thousands, if not millions of people being evacuated out of the area. Now, every storm has its own really personality. Uh, some storms are rain events, some are wind, other uh, storm surge. Uh, you gotta remember, we're cleaning up from Hurricane Helene, so that was a storm surge event. So now we kind of have all three. We're checking all of the boxes. Uh, heavy winds, a lot of rain, and storm surge. And we have a lot of debris, people's belongings, building materials, debris from Hurricane Helene that's been stacked up in front of homes. So the race is on to get that picked up so it doesn't turn into projectiles and fly against other people's homes or clog up sewers and drains. Crews have been working nonstop through the night to get everything picked up. That includes police escorts to and from dump sites. In fact, I think I heard from Mayor Jane Castor that about 75% of the city of Tampa debris has already been picked up. But again, sometime this afternoon, that will, that will um, stop at some point this afternoon. Uh, talking about travel, uh, a lot of the airports are closed already. A Tampa International, that closed at 9 yesterday morning. St. Pete Clearwater International Airport, that is also closed. Orlando Airport, that is closing at 8 o'clock this morning. Uh, when you have a lot of water, you're talking about a lot of bridges in our area. So the big three, Courtney Campbell Causeway, the Howard Franklin, and the Gandy Bridges, those are all expected to close this afternoon. And when the winds get high, about 40 miles per hour or higher, of sustained winds than the Sunshine Skyway Bridge uh, connecting Manatee County to Pinellas County that will also close. You probably have seen some of the videos of the gas stations that are without fuel. There is not a fuel shortage. Um, it is actually at the port, but there are just not enough trucks to get it out fast enough for the demand. There's just so many people trying to get gas all at the same time to try to evacuate out of here. So it's been a challenge trying to get gas to these gas stations. Now, all across the Bay Area, businesses have been boarding up in preparation of this hurricane. This is footage that was actually taken at a restaurant just down the street from us off of Kennedy Boulevard. The businesses are sharing messages of support for the community, writing Tampa strong, uh, thanking locals for their support and finishing signs off with their hearts. Um, there have been other signs that uh, have expletives telling Milton to go away. Of course, I cannot share that uh, on TV. But I will say, you guys mentioned the Waffle House. Some of those are closed in our area. So you have Waffle Houses closing. You also have Jim Cantori sightings. Uh, so you know you're in the bullseye of a major storm. Allison. And Walter, I, I mean, we see this time and time again with these tropical systems, down trees, down power lines, widespread power outages. So, you know, hopefully folks are charging their devices now so that they can watch you guys on the air. Unfortunately, when the power will likely go out a bit later tonight and tomorrow. Yeah, that's for sure. And uh, the response from linemen, uh, obviously we sent some of our linemen to the Carolinas to help out with that recovery effort. We have actually pulled them back. Uh, and uh, Tampa Electric, they actually have a response of about 5,000 linemen on standby, which is historic. We have never had that before. And a lot of linemen are staging at Tropicana Field. Uh, you might have seen on social media, a lot of cots are in the actual field area where the Tampa Bay Rays play baseball. Uh, they are there waiting, along with the National Guard, ready to deploy uh, whenever the storm moves through, guys. Well, thank you so much, Walter Allen, with our sister station in Tampa. Please stay safe. We appreciate your reporting this morning. Thank you. All right, welcome back to Forecasting with Friends. I want to get right out live to Florida. I've never met Connor Hansen personally, but Connor, I'm glad you're here. I'm going to call you my friend today because I'm concerned for you. I'm thinking about you. Tell me what's the latest going on there in Tampa Bay area. Well, JD, of course, I appreciate that. 
Just now we're hearing some sort of a alarm blaring here in downtown Tampa as we continue to see these strong bands of wind and rain really build up. This storm expected to make landfall just about 12 hours from now and it's less than 200 miles from Tampa Bay right now already causing some serious problems in South Florida. Tornadoes, people here in Tampa waiting anxiously to see where exactly this storm is going to hit. I tell you, uh, it seems like this 10 a.m. update from the Hurricane Center has sped things up a little bit. Have you have you sensed any sort of, of tension or even higher stress levels uh, with the fact that it's maybe even closer than what we thought it was going to be? Most definitely, and thankfully, we're not seeing a whole lot of people out here. So hopefully most people who are in those mandatory evacuation zones have gotten out of here. And if they're not, they at least hunkered down. Uh, you know, Tampa has some areas that you definitely should leave and some that you're probably OK, but it might be a little bit dicey. If you go a little bit further out to the Gulf in places like Clearwater, some of the barrier islands, they told people you have to leave because first responders just aren't going to be able to get out there until this storm has passed so anticipating a dangerous situation uh, especially depending on where exactly the eye wall of the storm hits and where that strongest wind and storm surge because we're talking a possible 15 foot storm surge if you imagine this waterfront behind me 15 feet higher where I'm standing right now it could be underwater and I'm glad you mentioned all those threats, the storm surge and the winds. There's been a lot of talk about all the Helene debris that was still out and about. Have you seen a, a, a progress in that? Has there been cleanup that's been able to take place in this short amount of time? Yeah, and it's, it's really hard to believe it's only been two weeks since Hurricane Helene passed by, and that destroyed some people's homes here on the water due to the flooding. But so many people had to bring their debris out to the street uh, from all over the place. There was a huge effort to clean that up. We're talking about thousands of pounds of that debris. Unfortunately, it doesn't sound like all of it was able to be cleaned up. So there are warnings about that floating debris, especially once we see hurricane force winds again. Uh, that will turn into projectiles. So officials here are telling people if it's outside your home, just do your best to lock it down because that's going to go flying. All right, Connor, I know we're running out of time. I'd love to talk with you a lot more, to be honest. Thanks for making time for us. I do have one more question. Uh, this is a little bit more of a casual show here, and, and we're, we just sort of want to know kind of the behind the scenes a little bit side of things. Tell me, how, how are you going to stay safe tonight? What, what are your plans to make sure that you're going to be able to talk to us tomorrow morning? Well, I hope it'll ease your mind, J.D., to know that we're not planning to stand exactly right here tomorrow morning during the thick of it. We'll be moving to a much safer location, a little bit more elevated, as long as we can stay there safely during the storm. Of course, if things get too dangerous, we'll have to pull back, but we plan to be here with you throughout all that. I hope we get the chance to talk again um, during that storm and after the storm, but we could be in for quite the night here and into early tomorrow morning. All right, Connor Hanson's in the Tampa Bay area, and I believe we get to talk to you again during our noon newscast. So we'll plan to to talk to you then. Uh, and otherwise, and otherwise, other words, uh, otherwise, uh, make sure you're staying safe over the next 24 hours. All right, thanks, JD. Looking forward to it. All right, that's going to uh, give us the latest there from uh, Connor Hansen again in the Tampa Bay area. Where we'll have a couple more uh, things to say about Milton right after this break. Well, this morning we're joining you from Clearwater, Florida, taking cover from the rain under a gas station that sits just after you get off a bridge heading into Clearwater. And this is what a lot of these businesses miles from the ocean look like boarded up sandbags on the ground and the pumps that we're standing next to actually are completely sealed as well. That's been a huge issue around here is gas just running out with how many people we're trying to fill up and evacuate in time before Milton's landfall. This is actually a look at the final hours of preparations across Pinellas County for Milton last night. It was an eerie sight as all businesses in zones A, B and C were ordered to close by this morning. Even grocery stores like Florida's popular Publix are not open. While thousands upon thousands of residents have heated evacuation warnings, some like Brian Perrette 
We're still trying to get last minute things done and he had a last minute change of plans. He was planning on riding out the storm at a co working space in downtown St. Petersburg, but because a few large cranes downtown can be secured ahead of Milton's landfall, he says the fire department told them they had to leave. My plan was to bring me and my dogs here and ride the storm out. Now I got to have a plan to ride the storm out back at home. We've got buildings that are 100 over 100 years old. They've never seen this kind of wind. They've never seen this kind of rain and it's coming. At this point, it's a race against the clock for people to get out of these coastal communities and options are still available as far as places for them to go. Pinellas County has opened additional shelters in Clearwater in St. Pete. They now have 10 total emergency shelters opened and last night officials told us that more than 5000 people were taking advantage. We know the local bus service is offering free rides to shelters 24 7 until conditions become unsafe for them to be on the road. And we also know Uber has a special code that people can use to get a free ride to those shelters also. In Pinellas County, the barrier islands especially took the brunt of devastation from Hurricane Helene. The sheriff actually cut off access to everybody as of seven o'clock last night. And right now people are taking advantage of the big Tampa Bay area bridges still being open because those are expected to close later this afternoon. For now, I'm Regina Gonzalez reporting in Clearwater for Fox 13. We'll send it back to you. All right, thank you, Regina. That's a fantastic report there as the final preps are on and we're already beginning to see some of the impacts, the tropical impacts from Hurricane Milton. They're minimal right now, but they're certainly going to be ramping up throughout the day before the actual hurricane force winds reach there along with that deadly storm surge. And we've already begun to see tornadoes happening that are directly related to, to Milton. The tornadoes have been happening much further to the south in the Florida Peninsula area. They, they're not happening really right where we're expecting this landfall to take place. But as I show you our forecast cone, again, I'm going to stress and remind you that this yellow shaded area is not at impacts. It's not saying where the winds are going to be or where we're going to see the storm surge. It's talking about where will the center of this storm be tracking? Where will the forecast take the storm? All the other threats that will be going along with it will be happening later. So we are looking at this landfall, the very center of the eye that we're focused on, that happening uh, more in the 10 p.m. to midnight time range. Uh, and that's a little bit earlier on than what we've been talking about. The speed now, as you'll notice on this update, uh, has, has increased to about 17 miles an hour to the northeast. Those sustained winds currently is 145. I'm not sure I've had a chance to mention that, but 145 on the current sustained winds. Still looking at borderline category three to category four at landfall. We'll have more news coming up at Fox 26 News at noon.